One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. <clears throat> Fuck. <clears throat> That's not the right one. And welcome to storage, where this actually could be a walk-in freezer. Can you see my breath? All right, I'm checking to see if the camera can see storage, because if it can't, I don't know. On my right, you'll see what I'm calling the holiday globe. Inside is a very beautiful Christmas tree from Kohl's and some hearts that Beth got for Valentine's Day. <clears throat> there goes the voice again. There goes the voice. <clears throat> Should have drank some tea. <clears throat> Man, I wonder if I can if I can mute it if it'll work. Let me try to mute it. Here's a test. <clears throat> nope. Here's another test. That worked. I know the mute button. I'm going to use that from now on. But yeah, as you can see, I'm in a cold meat locker where I will spend the rest of my days if there is an apocalypse. Do I plan on there being an apocalypse? Not necessarily, but I don't think that's one of those things where you can prepare for. I think it's um, it just happens and no one's ready for it ever. Right? Tina and I were talking about a couple apoc apocalypse. We were talking about a copolypse. We were talking about apocalypse on um Slop City and I decided that I wasn't going to, you know, hide out, get strong, save a bunch of food, do this, do that. I was just going to open the door, whether it be zombies vampires, aliens, whatever creatures are the apocalypse creatures, I was just going to say, hey, I'm here. Take me now because I'm not going to do all this nonsense, right? I'm not going to spend weeks bulking up, getting getting strong now. I'm not going to do that. Just cleared my throat and you didn't hear it. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, a couple of things up top here. I'll be in St. Louis for the Future is Female show at the Heavy Anchor. The show is put on by Meredith Hopping. Always want to call her Meredith Topping. Not because that's funny, but because I think that's her name. Anyway, I think there's a few tickets available. So, if you're watching this on Thursday, February the 2nd, it'll be tomorrow. If you're watching this on February Fourth, the show's already happened, and unless you have what's called a time machine, you can't go. So come see me. I'll be headlining. I've had a couple people say, um, are you going to have a meet and greet? I'm not going to have a meet and greet because it's a very small venue. What I'm going to do is walk outside and see everyone. So that's not really a meet and greet. That's just me walking outside and saying, hey, everybody. So I got that. I wanted to talk about off the top. And secondly, I have my Patreon running strong. I have, I don't know how many people, maybe 50, which is more than I thought. I thought there'd be three of us. But there's like 50 of us. And... I told people on Patreon that if you leave a voicemail to let me know, and I'll play that. Patreon people get first dibs on a voicemail. And let's go ahead and play one now. Briefly looked at it, haven't really listened to it. So let's see what this is. Catherine from uh, Gotta rewind New York it. City. I'm calling Gotta you from rewind the street. It. Gotta rewind it. Wow. 
How do you rewind on Google Voice? You don't. You got to press the button. Okay, I'm so mad. I'm so mad right now. Hey, Libby. This is Catherine from uh, New York City. I'm calling you from the street. I'm, like, so nervous. I'm not sure why because you're so great. And uh, Don't be nervous. I'm a huge fan. So um, I just want to say, like, one thing I was responding to in your last podcast is you are like, I think you're – sister that you just found she was very christian or some other families were christian on facebook and they wouldn't like her kind of whatever i just want to say i go to like a a church here in new york where we have like gay black minister lesbian transgender etc and like dude we love you we would all love you and anyone who goes to a church who wouldn't love like Justina or any of that, you know, fuck those people because they're not on the side of Whoa. Christ. So just wanted to let you know another positive message. You're amazing. Uh, in particular, I love Chelsea too, but, you know, you have your own special thing. And, uh, you know, calling from the streets of Brooklyn the and hope to see you here sometime at a club here. All right. Take care. Bye. First of all, I love that Catherine is calling from the streets. That's hysterical. Calling from the streets. And when I said the thing about religious people, when I mentioned that I looked for my sister on Facebook just to make sure that she wasn't one of the religious people I found, it's because I'm not a bad person, but I don't go to church. I guess I I kind of live life as a Christian where I treat people with respect. I... um. What are some other things that, that Christians do? I don't covet my neighbor's wife. I don't even know my neighbor, so I could never covet them or their wife. Don't kill people. I've never k- killed anyone. Um, what are some of the other commandments? Treat those as you would want to be treated, and I do that. Now, I'm like I said, I don't go to church. I don't consider myself a Christian, but I I'm, I'm, do things that, Christ wanted you to do. You see what I'm saying? So my hang-up was that, like, I just thought, man, if it's somebody who's radically religious, they would take one look at my Facebook and say she uses too much foul language, um, she shows her booty too much, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was my only hang-up with that. Um, I'm glad that you have a good, nice church that is tolerant of people and different people. I think that's how all churches should be. Who am I to to speak on what churches should be? I just think churches, if you're out there saying Jesus is your guy, then act like Jesus. Don't post a message to me on Facebook that says you're a disgusting pig because that's not what Jesus would do. Jesus would say to me, hey, Maybe clean up your language. But would he, though? I don't know. And he might say, oh, quit showing your butt so much on Instagram and those TikTok leggings. And then I would say, first of all, Jesus, you gave me this butt. And secondly, you created the person who created TikTok leggings. So what can I say? So don't come at me, Lord, because I'll come right back at you with the, hey, Jesus, you created this person. I'm so glad to be sitting here with you guys. I had kind of a hard time getting here this week. Yesterday when I came, it was approximately 30 some odd degrees, and it was sleeting because I, of course, waited till the last minute to do this because I had some other stuff going on. I waited till the last minute. I get up here at 7 o'clock last night, push the buttons for the code to get in. The gate opens about this much and then stops. And that's when I realized that my procrastination was going to cause me an issue. The gate was all icy on the top. And the little thing that goes... To pull it, 
couldn't catch because it was icy. So then I get out of my car, and I'm trying to push it. No give. It's not meant to be pushed open by me. Uh, scooted back. Scooted back and put my coat in about four more times just to see what it would do, and it didn't do anything. So then I called Joe because I know he works 24 hours a day, or at least that's what he told me. And I said, Joe, look, I want to let you know that I tried to open the gate, and it's so icy that it couldn't open. And he said, I knew that ice was going to be a problem, and I couldn't disagree with him. And that was my fault. So I couldn't come in here last night. Came up here earlier today to do it, and there was a sign that said, written on cardboard that said, if you're a customer of this place that's over here, the wood shop, drive around this other way and you can get in there. Drove around there and they had the whole gate open. But by that time, I was like, you know what? I uh, I don't want to do this right now. I didn't have my makeup with me. I wasn't ready. And on top of that, here's the, the clincher. I had just gotten back from the dentist. So this whole side of my face was numb and not working. You might notice there's a little bit of redness under my eyes, and that's from me crying at the dentist. I know there's a lot of people that have anxiety about going to the dentist, and I'm one of those people, and it's not fun. I try to keep it together, but when you have another person's hands and instruments in your mouth, it's scary. So I had to get a nice little temporary crown put on the back because I had to shave the tooth down to put a new crown on there because it was it was done. It's the last real living tooth in my head, and it's gone now. Well, there's a nub there, but the rest of the tooth is gone. Cried a lot. And it's not just the crying, it's the involuntary shaking. I can't stop shaking because I'm scared. You know how when you see a cartoon and the, and the little guy's like, because they're so scared, and their teeth are chattering? That's me. And I said, I can't stop shaking. And he's like, you're fine, you're doing good. He has to talk to me like a child because I can't get it together. You're doing great. And I said, sir, I'm not doing great. It's great that I'm there getting the work done, but it's not great that I can't get it together. You're doing great. Oh, we're almost done. We're almost done. Love the dentist. The lady there, her name's Megan. She was so nice. Gave me a little, a little um, Finding Nemo squeeze toy to squeeze because I'm an adult. Like what? <laughs> the the dentists are always so real dry and matter of fact. It's the hygienist or the dental assistants that are are there to give you life. Because the dentist is in there with what I can only describe as um, miniature binoculars that are this small. He could probably see into my actual soul. And he's trying to do his work with a drill with a woman that's shaking uncontrollably and crying. But then we got Megan over here who was like, you're fine. You're doing great. Almost done. And she walked me through the process. We're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this. And I said, that's fine. Thanks for telling me, but don't you dare, Dr. Kang, tell me that I'm going to feel a little pinch because you know it's not going to be a pinch. Keep it real with me, doctor. I'm going to feel an intense Pain, when you place that needle into my jaw area, 
I'm not going to feel a pinch. A pinch is like this. What you're going to feel is feeling like somebody took a fence post from out in their cow pasture and rammed it into the side of your head. I'm keeping it 100, sir, and so should you. You're going to feel some pressure. That's not pressure. I feel like I'm being crushed underneath one of those street sweeper things that has a big metal thing and goes and smushes the asphalt down. That's that's what you should say, not you're going to feel pressure. You're going to feel some pressure. What I don't want to feel is anything. And as scared as I am of needles, I'm going to start having them put an IV drip into me to make me fall asleep so that I don't have to experience any of it. Sound off in the comments if you have any tips for me. Because what I do is, as soon as I sit down, I start doing breathing exercises. I'm like this. The thing that I'm most scared of, there's two things. I'm scared of the needles. I'm scared of the little... Here's the sound the needle makes when they get it out. I hope you can hear that. It goes like tink, tink. As soon as I hear them do that hitting the needle, that's when I lose it. Scared of the needles, and I'm also scared that I'll be sitting there not feeling anything because of the... It's not Novocaine anymore, but because of the stuff. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to feel a sharp pain and go, ah! That's what I'm terrified of. (laughs) (laughs) Today's show sponsored by Unidentified Soda Cup. I went and got this soda today at a Shell station, and usually here in Tennessee, the Shell stations have pretty good soda. This one had a soda machine that looked like it was from a bowling alley in 1982. It was just um, the plain thing with like five sodas in it, and it had a little thing that you go like this, and then the soda comes out. I'm used to the ones where you put your cup in, liquid goes in there, fills it up, you wait, you take about 10 drinks so you can get your money's worth, put it back in, and get more soda. This thing I went, and I'm just looking at it, waiting, waiting, waiting. And to fill up this 32-ounce cup, it took approximately eight minutes. And then I politely closed it and went about all my day. That's that's a lie. I went down the street to the um, Taqueria. It's called Taqueria Iberia Jalisco, which is my favorite food truck here in Nashville. They have, I hate to be one of those people that pronounces the words like this, quesabiria, but I speak Spanish, so that's why I pronounce it the way that it's supposed to be pronounced. And why do people get so mad when people do that? I myself get mad when I hear somebody like, can I get a tortilla? I don't know which, I think it's that they're speaking English, speaking English, and then all of a sudden they throw an accent in there. I think that's what gives me cringe. But I do it too. But also, I'm kind of showing off, because when I go to the food truck, I'm like, Hola, buenos dias. But I say it better. I say, hola, buenos dias. Like that. Si, uh, quiero dos um, quesabirias. I'd like two quesabirias. And I'm trying to show them, look, I care about your culture. I care about your language. And I want to speak it correctly. That's why I do it. And I know it just irritates some people. To no end. 
I'm not trying to to be like, oh, I'm cool because I speak Spanish. I'm just trying to. My my thing is more about um, respect, really. I'm trying to respect their language and how they pronounce stuff. So I could go up there and say, hola, quiero un taco y quesadilla. I could say that, but I feel like if I do that, I'm being lazy because I know how to pronounce it. I took a lot of Spanish in college and in high school. I think I already talked about that, where I picked my name as Diana. I need a list of stuff I talked about because I can't remember. And remember I said I want to have an assistant in here to push buttons? I need an assistant in here who's going to sit over there and say, you talked about that already. You talked about that. <clears throat> and people... Uh, some people have sent me messages saying they do want to be my assistant. At this time, I would love to have someone in here helping me. But at this time, again, I'm not rich, even though my net worth on the Internet says $400 million. You might have Googled that and thought, well, she can afford to hire me. I can't actually afford anyone right now unless you'll work for $1. And that's abusive. And I'm not going to make someone work for $1. <clears throat> and I'm not going to make someone work for free. People should be paid for their art, their labor, their time, their expertise, if you will. <laughs> Whew. <clears throat> People should be paid for their time. So at this time, I'm not actually hiring an assistant. Maybe one day I will. And I'll send my assistant ahead 20 minutes and say, go turn the space heater on. That'll be the first job of the assistant. So not taking applications right now. Unless you're like a really hot guy, then <laughs> that's another story. Or a hot girl. Let's not uh, let's not say I'm totally straight. I'd say I'm if six seventy percent straight. The other thirty percent, I'd say I'm not straight. I, you know, it it differs. Some days I'm fifty fifty. Some days I'm eighty twenty. Today I'd say I'm. I'd say 82% straight, and then the other number, whatever that is, I'm not going to try to subtract it, is not straight. Man, I, I love this mute button. The people on the video can see me going, <laughs> but you can't see it when you're listening. Let's see what other kind of little... Um, little voicemail we got. Hi, Libby. I am currently watching your most current uh, George podcast on YouTube, and you're talking about finger sniffing, and it just reminded me of the time I was probably four or five years old, yes, I remember that young, that my older brother and his best friend, Rice, Rice as in, like, the food, they were having a, like, a little... I guess, drink sale kind of thing, but they had cans of fruit punch. Thinking back on it now, they only had one can on the table, and it was open. Oh, no. And they said, here, oh, no. have this. No. I took a big swig. They both started laughing, and they told me after that that uh, it was actually their urine. They had urinated into a um, Hawaiian punch can, and given it to a toddler so hate my life hated it then hate it now <laughs> i love you bye okay i absolutely love that faith was listening to me in the background that's funny um <laughs> i'm not laughing because it's funny 
But the fact that she said they put it, they urinated in a Hawaiian punch can and then gave it to a toddler. (laughs) These boys should be sent to jail. And I don't know what the statue, I always say statue of limitations. The statute of limitations is on urinating in a can and giving it to a toddler, but I feel like that should never expire. We want justice for faith, and we want it now. I mean, I thought Buddy Ray's perfume was bad. This is actually someone ingesting something into their body. What in the world? Well, Faith, we're all praying for you. I'm sorry that it happened, um, and I'm sorry I'm laughing, and probably some other people will be laughing. <laughs> she said, I hate my life now. I hate it then. I hate my life. Wow. I love these voicemails coming in. I love that people call me, and because I'm talking about or pretty much anything on here, then they feel they can talk about anything. And that's what I want. It's freedom of speech and not freedom of speech for, you know, I can write in the newspaper. It's freedom of speech, not that kind. Freedom of speech in that you can say anything. Anything at all. And of course, they'll be the devil's advocate that will say, well, the people that are, are, are saying you're a disgusting pig on Facebook, they have freedom of speech. You're right. But I want people to have freedom of speech <laughs> to say stuff that I like. I mean, of course, anybody can say anything. But I love that Faith was like, I'm listening to you right now. This inspired a story. And I'm going to tell this story, which is my truth, to you and at least 50 listeners. Because I've looked at my my metrics. It's more than 50 people. In fact, when I checked yesterday, I had just hit 5,000 downloads for the first three episodes, which is incredible. It's incredible. And I appreciate it. I thank you all. If I could give each of you a little maybe uh, go to the dollar store and get a a bucket, like a plastic cute bucket and some of that cute paper cellophane, I'd go around the dollar store. Well, first I'd have to get my cart because I'd have to get a bunch of these, at least 5,000. Well, let's do 5,000 divided by three episodes. It's like, let's just say, let's just say 200 people max. I'd go to each aisle in the dollar store And I would think, oh, would this person like this $1 box of Red Hots? And I'd put it in each little bucket. Then I'd go to the next aisle. Oh, would this person like a a spatula that's going to break after probably the third use? Yes, I'll put the spatula in there. And I'd go all around the dollar store and pick up nice, cute gifts. So you know how thankful I am for you. Well, I'd stay away from the frozen food section. I will not be getting anyone frozen food for a thank you gift. Will I get you some makeup that probably it doesn't match your color on your face? Yeah, I'll get put a couple of eyeshadows in there. Maybe some lip liners. Maybe some dried up mascara. It's not about the items I'm putting in there. It's about the time I'm taking, because you know I don't like going in a store. It's about the time I'm taking to go into store, get a cart, pick out all these items, put them in there, then wrap this little bucket up and give it to each of you personally. I don't know how I would do that. I know most of you would probably throw it away because it's going to be a bunch of junk. But that's... Let's just say right now... If you're watching this or listening to this, imagine me handing you a dollar store bucket with a bunch of dollar store items and handing it to you. And I'm saying, let me fix my hair for this. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. 
sincerely, and I'm looking you in the eyes. Thank you for listening, downloading, watching, etc. Because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I kind of do. I set all this up by myself. Sometimes I sit in front of the sword sign. Could be sitting in front of it right now. I don't know. <laughs> but I appreciate it. It's, it feels like it's been so long since I've been in here. I can't remember my buttons. Let's review. Okay. This sound with the with the cold air coming out of my mouth. I'm scared. I'm scared. Now that's acting. What you just saw was acting. You want me to do it again? I'm scared. After that performance, performance, I can't say nothing else. Nothing. Let's check out another. Some of these I have looked at, and I'm just going to push this one because it says, Hello, Libby. Oh, my goodness. It, I feel like this is going to be a good one. Hello, Libby. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. My voice sounds crazy. I just wanted to say... I am such a fan of you, and I'm so glad that you've made this new podcast. I'm just sitting here right now eating um, Chinese takeout, and I listened to the recent episode of the Storage Podcast, and I'm having a great Friday night. So thank you, and uh, love ya. you. Didn't say, you didn't say your name, but you are from a 902 area code, and I thank you, and I love you. And that's two people that have mentioned rice. Which means I am going to now have to drive to the rice Chinese place and get some fried rice. Thanks for that nice call. Some of these, some of these I have gone through and I listened to them. And this goes along the lines of me not accepting a compliment because a lot of them are so nice that I feel a little bit embarrassed. And I'm also like, if I play that, does that make me like a bragger? Like, oh, look at what everybody says about me, everybody. <laughs> it makes me feel like a little embarrassed, like like, sh like kind of shy. <laughs> I feel kind of shy. I'm a shy girl. It does. It makes me feel a little shy. Thank you for the nice messages. But then I think, okay, if, if I watch someone's podcast and I liked it, what would I say? I'd probably call and say, hey, I love your podcast. I love what you do. You're so beautiful. Probably what I'd say. And movie. Oh, <clears throat> I'm going to, I want to give you guys a teaser of the new song I'm working on. Because <sighs> it's such a banger. I'm just going to play it. So, you know, my friend Harry, he made the beat for me. And he made the beat for me because I, I said I wanted to make a song that was about me waddling because I waddle when I walk and he made this beat pretty quickly and then I uh, did this song now let me explain before I do it what I do is I'll get a beat oftentimes I'll go into the Voloco app not a paid sponsorship I'll go into the Voloco app I can put the music in and then I will I'm gonna say freestyle even though I'm not rapping I'm freestyling singing or freestyling um, you know, whatever I'm doing, singing lyrics, singing the chorus. So I'm making it up as I go. Well, this one I'm spending a little bit more time on because I have the chorus, but I don't have the lyrics yet. But the basic concept is to bring awareness to that I waddle when I walk, which is funny, but also I waddle. <laughs> 
that is uh, because of, uh, I'm assuming my lipedema, maybe I, my knees are bad, maybe it's because I'm larger. I don't know. Either way, I waddle. I'm good in the morning. When I first wake up and I haven't been walking all day, bam, bam, walking regular, almost regular, regular. Um, <laughs> throughout the day, though, I really start to get, get waddling. So that's what this song um, is about. But I, I want to play it because I, it's such a banger that I've been listening to it in my car and singing along. Harry made the beat. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. This is the verses. This is where the and verses will go, and I don't have a verse. Don't have the verses. This is the verse and the, the verses. Verses. Waddle while I walk. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. Here it comes. There's more, more verses, verses that I don't have written yet. For me to sing right. Then me clear my throat a lot. More verses. <clears throat> I'm just playing the whole song. Spoiler alert, playing the whole song. Here comes my favorite part. Not this part. Not me clearing my throat. Here it comes. This this part is a banger part. I can't believe I just played that whole thing because it's not ready yet. That's essentially. So uh, we're going to make a music video, obviously, for this. Um, when Harry comes into town, we're supposed to make a music video. Which is so funny to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to normalize the way that I walk. Because I am embarrassed. When I walk, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Because I, I can't walk right. <laughs> I always say, oh, I got bad legs. Well, I do. I can't walk right. And it's embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm normalizing the fact that, yes, I do walk weird, but it's okay. And I shouldn't have to feel ashamed for it. Because who feels shame when you hear a banger like Having this? Made the beat. It's a banger, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. Waddle when I walk. Hear that that leather layer. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. This is the verses <laughs> and the verses, verses. This is the verse and the verses, verses. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Waddle when I walk. Oh yeah. Waddle when I walk. <laughs> Water when I walk, water when I walk, oh yeah. There's more verses <coughs> for me to sing right here. Sing some more verses. <coughs> sing the verses. Water when I walk, water when I walk, water when I walk, oh yeah. Water when I walk, water when I walk, water when I walk, oh yeah. I'm gonna fast forward it to my favorite part. Water. Do you guys see how much joy that just brought me? That's what music does to me. It brings me so much joy. I was getting it. I was feeling it. 
I can't believe I just played that whole thing because I, I, I'm not ready for it to be released yet because I need the verses. Here are the verses, 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 and probably, I see, I don't even know. I haven't been working on it. I've been working on some other stuff. I've been writing with a couple of people, which is nice. Got a couple of bits getting ready to export into real life. Um, but yeah, I've been focused on so many other things. I We had Jeremiah, I was going to say, I had Jeremiah Watkins here. Like, I had anything to do with it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins was here, and um, they did so many different sketches, and I got to be in some of them, but it was so nice just being around people writing all at the same time, brainstorming, throwing ideas out. Hey, this would be funny if you did this, or this would be funny. But if you check out my IG, there's a couple things that have already been put out there that are hysterical. I can't wait. I mean, there's so many that they're going to be releasing these videos for the next year because there's so many sketches. And I was going to have Jeremiah on here, but after about, 36 hours of nonstop, I was, my body was done and I couldn't do anymore. So I wanted to have him in here. There just wasn't time. So if he comes into town again, I'm going to have Jeremiah on here because he is, what, a, he's an incredible comedian. I know I always talk about him. Great comedian, great improviser, fun guy, nice guy. Check him out. But, yeah, we watched last night, Chelsea and I, and Beth, and Travis. Travis is in town, hoping to have Travis on the podcast, because there's a lot of stuff I don't know about Travis. I don't really know Travis at all. And if you don't know who Travis is, he is a friend of, of Chelsea and her family, lived with them in California, great guy, great friend to Greg, but he's here now helping them with some painting and, and mudding, as they say. And um, I was like, man, I really want Travis on this podcast because I would really like to get to know him. He's such a nice guy. Um, a, a help, Another helper, just like Officer Daniels, helper guy. And he's really funny, too. He's kind of quiet, but when he gets going, he throws out some bangers, baby. Waddle, 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 waddle. If I don't get a Grammy for Waddle when I walk, if me and Harry aren't accepting the Grammy for not only the greatest beat, but also the greatest lyrics ever, I'm going to be pissed. If you don't see me waddling onto a stage at the Grammys, accepting a Grammy and then doing a live performance... I'll be mad as hell. I'm just saying. God, it's quiet. It's so quiet. So as far as guests lined up, I don't have anybody lined up, but these are the guests I want. Justina's going to be here. Rafe Williams is going to be here. I hope Tina can get here before we go on tour. I would love to have... Um, Chelsea on here, Beth, Maggie, everybody. I want everybody on here. And I want it to be 50-50. I want one episode of just me and then one of a guest. But is it going to work out like that? I don't know. Because I'm thinking of how I'm going to be on tour and I have to take all this stuff with me and I'm not going to have this beautiful sign behind me. So just get ready for that. I won't have this Christmas tree from Coles behind me. Have I talked about this lady yet? This lady right here, uh, uh, so of course I worked at a school, and this was one of the toys. 
And I looked at it, and this was after I had done the McRib video. If you haven't seen it, a woman rages about extra McRib. So in my head, I'm like, well, this is Charlene. What could I do with this toy to make another video? I'm like, this is Charlene. So I thought, okay, like voodoo doll with the pins in the doll. So I kind of kept that idea in my head for a while. Meanwhile, keeping this in, in my car, just in case, because it seems like I get a lot of ideas when I'm driving. So one day, I'm at McDonald's, like I always am, sitting in their parking lot, using their Wi-Fi, drinking their soda. And an ambulance pulls up, and it's an ambulance from the fire department. So the back of it looks different. There's like lines like this, like diagonal lines, because people... After they saw the video I made, they said, that's not an ambulance, that's a fire truck. Well, it's an ambulance from the fire department, so it looks different. I'm not an expert on emergency transportation, but I can tell you, it was an ambulance. And I thought, this is a good time for me to do a video. And I believe I only did one take. But I basically was like, I got this voodoo doll of Charlene, and I've been... Uh, punching it in the cooter and doing whatever to it. And then in my head, I was like, oh, Charlene's in that McDonald's and that's why the ambulance is here and they're going to bring Charlene out. So that's just another way that my mind works. I had the idea in my head and then at the perfect time, serendipitously, 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 um, uh, at night eight, an ambulance came, and then I thought, this is my time. So there is a part two to the McRib story. I don't know if you've seen it. You can look it up. I, I don't know what it's called. Uh, let's listen. You know what? We can listen to it on here because this is my property. This is my property. I have to put my glasses on, y'all gotta put my glasses on yeah i can't play anybody other anybody else's music or videos on here because it's copywritten but guess who's i can play mine oh my goodness a million there's if you haven't been to my youtube channel you're just listening randomly go to libby higgins and just look at what i got up there just some really silly things oh wow this is a couple of them got copyright strikes from i don't know what <clears throat> Carla sounds off. Carla encounters Pokemon Go players. <laughs> and that's because Carla was also playing Pokemon. That's why. Golly. Where is this bad boy? I don't know where it is. Carla reviews a book in her car. I don't even remember doing these. <clears throat> there it is. Excuse me, part two, Carla's Revenge. And it's going to play an ad. So New I'm Cascade. I'm going to turn that down so we don't hear that ad for Cascade. I'm getting targeted ads about Cascade. Hey, y'all, it's Carla. I'm sitting outside this uh, McDonald's on Dorset. You know where. I ain't even got to say it. I got this voodoo doll. Of Charlene. Right here. I ordered it off eBay. And I've been repeatedly punching it in the cooter. Just over and over again. Just like this. For what she done to me. And lo and behold, look who shows up. It's a goddamn ambulance. Stupid. It's an ambulance probably to pick up Charlene. I'm sitting here waiting to see Charlene. The real incarnate, not the voodoo doll, to come out on the stretcher complaining about intense cooter pain. Intense cooter pain. So voodoo works. <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the video. Voodoo works. And then the end of the video. Josh Red Apple. Oh my God. Somebody's calling me while I'm on here. Hold on, I'll answer it. 
Josh Apple, I want to let you know that you are live on my podcast right now, and I can cut this out later if I need to, but what's going on? Hold on. Let me put let me put you on Bluetooth. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Apple here live on the Storage Podcast. We want to see why he's calling me. Oh, uh, about Mexico. Oh, is it bad news? No, it's great news. Okay. Um, um, I might, I might be out there. Oh, cool! For part of the time, if it overlaps. Well, that'll be incredible. All right. Well, look, I'm, I'll let you get back to what you're doing. All right. Why don't you drop your your uh, your handle so everybody knows where to find you? <laughs> uh, I don't know where. I don't have a handle. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for calling. Yep. Talk to you soon. All right, everybody, that was Josh Apple. He was the director of photography and the cinematographer on the film's Baby Oopsie. And I probably didn't say what his titles were correctly, but um, he's a friend of mine. He's also just um, let a cat out of the bag that I am going to Mexico again soon, here in a couple of weeks. Um, He has a place down there. It's an Airbnb and he's going to allow me to stay there. So that's nice. Just a little, nice little vacation before I go to tour. And kind of tour is kind of a vacation because I'm out staying in the hotels, chilling, drinking soda, putting my feet up, working hard. I love that that rings so loud. Can't put it on airplane mode because um, need the internet right now. So I think that's a good way to end it. That's a good way to end it. I don't even know what I was talking about right before. Oh, we were talking about Charlene. Yeah, go look at this video. It's really ridiculous. The way I ended it. Voodoo works. I ended it with a question. Voodoo works. It's that in flexion at the end. I guess that could be an exclamation point. Voodoo works? No, that's a question. Voodoo works. So, again, thank you for everyone that's joined the Patreon. The tiers that I have provided, there's a $5 tier, which I'm considering at this time. It could change kind of like a tip jar. You want to, hey, I want to help you, support you. Here's $5. I'm not expecting anything from you. The next one is a $10 one, and it's, I've, these are the things that I said I'm going to do. At least one extra podcast episode or a crystal food review per month. And then if you have a topic you want me to talk about or a question, or if you want me to play a voicemail, I'll do that. I think that's I think that's a pretty fair ten dollar tier. Because <clears throat> at first I was like, oh, I'm going to send out a keychain. I'm going to do this, do that. And it's like I have to be realistic. I can't take any more on my plate right now, and deliver. <clears throat> I have to be realistic. So I'm not trying to make promises that I can't keep. But basically, you just get one extra video a month that's only available to Patreons. Nobody else is getting it unless they're looking over my... Like, if I'm watching the video and they're looking over my shoulder and they're not subscribed to my Patreon, then they're a cheater. But I can't help that if there's a guy behind me on a city bus. I don't ever ride a city bus, but let's say I'm on a city bus. I'm looking at my phone, watching the video that I created for you guys. And he peeps over my shoulder and I say, Hey, are you subscribed to my Patreon? And he'll say, who are you? And then I'll show him the link to it. And he'll go, why would I, I don't even know you, ma'am. Why would I want to do that? So that could happen. Um, but yeah, thanks to everybody. And if you can't, don't, you don't have to send a message. Oh, I want to support you, but I can't afford it. 
That's not a problem. I love you anyway. But there are people that have reached out and said, you know, how can I support you? This is a way for people who can handle it at this time, even though everything is incredibly expensive to handle it. Otherwise, you just listening, you just watching, you just saying, hey, have you guys seen Libby Higgins' new podcast? It's pretty cool. And tell if you tell your friend, don't even tell your friend. Tell your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Speaking of sisters, I have to talk about this really quick before I go. I did meet my sister. My sister from another mister. My sister, my sister Lee, and I, I can say my sister's name. Her name is Karen. Um, We all met this past weekend, and it was like, for me, it was emotional, but it was also like it felt normal. Like I felt like I had known her forever. And she's funny and kind and everything you'd want in a sister. And I was a little worried about my sister Lee. I thought she would have a hard time. I thought she'd be a little bit more emotional, but she was fine. I think I was actually more emotional than her. And my sister saved a, a child that could have been possibly um, in a water-related incident. <laughs> but we were at the swimming pool, and the, one of the little kids, my great-niece, was like, help, help. And we were all kind of like, what's going on? Is, is she really need help? Is she playing? And all of a sudden, sis, Lee with all her clothes on, just jumps in the pool (laughs) to get the child and everything was fine. So shout out to sis for doing that. Cause it, it was all so fast. We didn't know what I'm just like, what I'll never get up fast enough to save anyone. And my niece, her mother, we were all just kind of like, what's happened? Like it, it just was quick. But my sister Lee wasted no time in jumping in the water in full attire. Then my other sister, Karen, was actually underneath the water when all this happened and then came up and was like, did something happen? (laughs) My sister, Karen, looks just like my mother. She made facial expressions that I, 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 I was speechless like I am right now. I was like, whoa, it's like having my mom sitting right there. It was spooky. How can somebody you don't, you know, she's never met my mom. How can she have some of the same distinct facial expressions? Oh. But I think, um, I don't think I know we're going to be seeing each other more. We're going to get my brother, my little brother, Andy. He was kind of upset with us because we didn't invite him, but... My brother doesn't have a phone. So how do you get a hold of somebody without a phone? So he kind of got his feelings hurt because we didn't invite him, but he'll go next time. But yeah, I'll I'll talk about that more. Um, I mean, there really isn't any more to say except that it was just like, like we've always known each other. crazy lots of people this is the part that really freaked me out lots of people on youtube and and on instagram were sending me messages saying hey i also have a sister or brother that my mom had to give up or you know we we found my brother or sister i couldn't believe the amount of people with this with this uh dna tech with this dna technology and whatnot boy we're really finding our relatives back in the day they could just hide this shit well you ain't hiding it no more we got your asses. Ooh, my tooth still kind of hurts. Oh. But I love y'all. And I'm going to get out of here because I think maybe I have frostbite on my toes and fingers. And with that, I tell you. A dance. Another dance. 
say goodbye. Love y'all. If this isn't recording, I'm going to lose my mind. Bye. Bye.